Hi there, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'll be discussing about how we can utilize the Amazon SQS, that is the Amazon Q service, and how we can send the messages between the distributed applications using this Amazon Simple Q service. So basically there is a concept of producers and consumers, as well as we can have an encryption in it, we can have a fully managed message queuing service that will help the reliability and continuation of exchange of messages between our applications. So I will just show you this one along with this, how I will show you how we can use it uh, through uh, regional endpoints, how we can use the REST API in order to call the regional endpoints and we can create our queue or we can send our message. Uh, there is a concept of long polling and short polling. So we will see about it, a little bit about it. So I will just first show you with the uh, through the console, how we can create a queue and all. Later on, I will be moving on to the uh, to the postman, how to send a request and how the request look like and what are the various headers we need to be passed along with it. So I'll be showing you one simple example for it. So let's uh, move on to the console and go to the service Amazon SQS. So you can see over here, I have the Simple queue service over here. So here we will create a queue. So you can see it provides a queue for high throughput system to system messaging and all. So there are multiple use cases are there. So, and what are the various benefits of it? And the use cases used by various industries and what else we can integrate with Lambda, or we can have a SNS, all those things we can do it. Okay, so just uh, move on to let's create a queue over here. So there are two kinds of there, standard and the FIFO. Standard in which it is uh, guaranteed at least once delivery, and maybe the messaging order is not preserved. So maybe the last message reaching first and first message reaching last, so it can happen. But if you choose the option FIFO, first in, first out delivery message ordering is preserved. So if you want the, some uh, some uh, sequence of messages that you are sending, so you want the delivery also to be done in the same sequence, so we can opt with the FIFO. So I'm just choosing over here standard one. So here I am putting my queue demo. And rest of the configurations over here, visibility timeout, now these are very important things. You can just uh, click on the info and read about it. it. Says the length of the time that a message received from a queue will not be visible to the other consumers. So basically, here they are like uh, producers and consumers concept is there, like who are going to consume this message and all, and who is going to produce which application is being going to produce this uh, on triggering some event or Lambda. So these kind of things we can do it. So for that, this visibility timeout, delivery delay is there, message retention period for how long you want to keep it, four days, and maximum message size, you can change it, delivery delay if any, receive messages, and encryption by default, it is enabled and a key type is SQS key, it is managed by SQS. It create manages and uses the encryption for us. Access policies by default, it's a simple define a basic access policy. So only the queue owner can receive the messages. Only queue owner can send the messages. So read drive allow policy that nothing need to be done. Then there is a dead queue. Letter queue is there. If the, some messages are not delivered, there is a dead queue, so we can enable that, we can send it to that, and we can retry those messages to be delivered again. So this I am just keeping it disabled because we are just looking into just a basic example for SQS and just create a queue. So our queue has been created. So I'll just go to the queues over here. You can see this is my queue. If you click here, so there is a send and receive messages option over here. So we can send message, hello, from some, let's say, APP1, and del delivery delay, nothing, seconds. So here are some message attributes we can add, like um, 
we can have some optional attributes along with your message like a timestamp, uh, some geospatial signature data and signatures, as well as certain identifiers we can have. So we can add up to 10 attributes to your message. So this is a quite interesting part. So if certain attribute you want to check or you want to ignore or you want to not to uh, re receive that message, we can set up this attribute. Now here, uh, there are some uh, receiving edit poll settings. So always go with a, a long poll. So there is there is a two kind of polling, short and long polling. So long polling will help us to reduce uh, our cost using SQS. So it is like basically reducing the number of empty responses. So when there are no messages available to return in reply to a received message, uh, request sent to the Amazon SQS and it eliminates the false empty responses. So it's quite important to set up this poll settings properly. So uh, currently let me send some message. So this is the message I'm going to send. Okay, let me remove. I don't want to add any attribute. Let me just remove it. Okay, so I have sent the message and it is ready to be received. So you can see in the received messages. So I will just click on, you can you can change the poll settings over here. You can see the uh, duration and also make it sure you keep it a little bit larger. So that is a long polling. And uh, if you click poll for messages, so you can see it is receiving and the message received over here is this is the message that we have received at the consumer end so we can retrieve this message after the polling is finished we can check our message you can see hello from app one if any attributes are there it will show you and details about already there in the message id size and all those things md5 so this is how you can create a uh, queue and you can send and receive messages. But the most important thing, like how we can integrate in our application and how we can use it. So now in order to use this, we have uh, regional endpoints and service endpoints. So I will just show you example with how we can utilize the regional endpoints for SQS. And we can create a queue with that. And I will show you how we can send SMS. And, but before moving ahead, so you just you go to the IAM and make it sure you have your uh, key downloaded. So you need to utilize this in order to provide the AWS signature. So you can just go to the IAM over here and manage access keys over here. And you can uh, generate your key over here. So once you create this key that we can utilize in the postman. So let's move on to the postman. Okay, before moving into the uh, postman, you can see over here a few interesting things, the endpoints. So this is our regional endpoints are being defined. So each service, so we will be having uh, to a service, we can connect to the regional endpoints, global endpoints, so these are the regional endpoints, the service code dot region code dot Amazon AWS dot com for DynamoDB, SQS, SNS, SDS, whatever you want. So similarly, we have the uh, service endpoints. So if you want to connect programmatically, then we have to use this endpoints. So we have some quotas. We can set up the limits, maximum number of service resources. These kind of things we can set up in this. So I'll be using. Uh, a regional endpoint. So I'll be using like something like that EU, US East 2. So before proceeding, you can see uh, like how like first we are going to create a queue using the request. So you can see this is the request sample request is there. So in which we the most important thing XAMZ target Amazon SQS dot create queue. And this is our host and this is the content type is also very important. And this is the auth param that we have to provide as an AWS signature in the authorization in the header. And uh, payload size, nothing to be done. And this is the body, the JSON body that we need to provide. So I'll just show you the postman. Let's uh, move on to the postman. So you can see over here, you have to choose over here, AWS signature over here. 
and make it sure you choose the request headers and this is access key and the secret. So you need to provide your secret. So I hope you're not able to view my secret over here. Anyhow, it's not completely visible. So in the headers over here, you need to pass the host. You can just always remember it is always a post request for any of the so uh, API requests to the Amazon services. So it is always a post. And uh, you need to provide the host. You can see AMZ target, Amazon SQL, create queue, and the content type. And in the body, I'll be just mentioning over here my queue. Let's say my queue uh, postman. And that's it. So visibility timeout attributes and tags if you want to provide it. And you can just send a request. So you can see uh, the queue URL is being shown to us. So we will just move on to our uh, AWS console and see whether the queue is being created or not. Okay, let's check over here. Simple queue services. And what are the list of queues we are having over here? Okay, so you can see this is a queue that has been created. So similarly, you can try to send a SMS so I will just click over here. So there is no uh, messages over here. You can see send and receive, nothing is there. So I will do one thing. Let's go on to the postman. So I have duplicated the tab, uh, but we need to make sure. Another thing I forgot to mention over here, like we need to use over here, uh, specify the region properly, otherwise you will be facing some issues. You need to provide that best AWS region and the service name. So I have cre uh, duplicated the tab. Now in the header, I need to make sure instead of create queue, I need to send an SMS and I need to change the body. So I'll just go to the sample. So you can see over here, so it will be send SMS. And rest of the things are same. And this is the body. So I'm just picking up the body over here. I need to put the queue URL. So I'll copy that queue URL from my existing one. And let's try. Send message. Okay, so first of all, I'll change the body over here. So we have to, okay, something is wrong over here, just a comma. Okay, so the, from the previous one, I will just copy this URL. Okay, so here I'm going to put the URL. Okay, so now what other things I have to change over here instead of this, we have to send message. Okay, let's try over here. So you can see 200 messages being sent. Now let's cross check our queue. So let's uh, refresh our poll for messages. Let's see what we are going to receive. So you can see we have received one of the message that we sent to the API. You can see it's still polling. We can stop the polling. So we don't want to keep the connection open for a long, just you can reduce the timing and all. So you can see this message is being received. So you can see this is a test message and uh, that is being received from the postman. So this is how you can retrieve the messages and you can, you know, if you have a microservices architecture and also one module is communicating with the other or some event is getting fired or you can, um, send this messages on to the SNS and all. We can even have that uh, 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 triggering some, uh, based upon some messages and all, you can trigger some Lambda and all. So you can utilize this easily. So this is how you can utilize the APIs in order to call these queues, uh, create the queue, send and receive messages. I hope I was able to explain this. Please let me know if you have any doubts. So thanks for watching. Please do like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.